Hi, this is the second video in the examples of application of ideal guess law. So the second example is a harder question. It's the kind of question that we physicists like to ask because a question like this forces you to remember many different relationships in physics and use all of them in trying to answer the question that is asked. How deep is the lake? And when you read this question, you might feel like, what does any of the given information have anything to do with that? Um, this is where you kind of have to remember back to what you learned way back in Physics 4A. Something about pressure due to weight of fluid. And there was this formula. The, that pressure is equal to density of fluid times gravitational acceleration times the height. Oh, this is why height is coming in. Um, so that had to be in the back of your mind and you had to remember that. And even after having remembered that, there are some pitfalls that you need to avoid. So that's why I want you to do this as an example to illustrate what types of questions you could be asked to remember to use the ideal gas law. So here you are given that you are dealing with an air bubble. So I hope that immediately flashes something in your head that, well, that must mean the number of gas particles is constant. And you are still using the same ideal gas law, PV is equal to and kt and maybe because n is constant you're already thinking ahead to uh, putting this into this format pv over t is equal to nk a constant quantity kind of a conserved quantity for this question um, maybe that will be useful we'll see all right let's diagram some of the information that are given so it's uh, going from bottom to top. It says volume increases by 85%. So we are given some kind of number for percent. Um, if we say volume at the bottom is V sub B, then the volume at the top is greater. And we would say it's greater by a factor, not 85%, but let me write it this way, 1 plus the fractional quantities that you are given. So here it would be 1 plus 0 0.85, so 1.85. All right, let's keep going. You are given the temperature bottom of the lake. So temperature bottom, and you are given temperature at the top. And it, you are asked how deep is the lake. So there are some informations that are not given to you. Um, one is the pressure at the top. So this is the kind of thing you might figure out after having missed this question a couple times. I'll just sh shortcut to the end. What you need to figure out is that pressure at the top is going to be one atmosphere. It's exposed to the atmosphere, so one atmosphere is what you should uh, figure out. <laughs> so. Pressure at the top is equal to one atmosphere. So the pressure at the bottom isn't given, but you have this for the change of pressure. So the pressure at the bottom will be equal to pressure at the top plus this change of pressure. All right, I think I have everything. Let's just start by writing down that conservation law equation. So pressure at the bottom times volume at the bottom over temperature at the bottom is equal to pressure at the top times volume at the top divided by temperature at the top. All right, so the temperature is given, so I won't really worry about that. The volume isn't given, but I can put the volume in ratios, and I think I know how to handle that. So what I need to worry about is um, I'm not given pressure at the bottom of the lake and it's not really the quantity I'm looking for. The quantity I am looking for is the height or the depth of the lake. 
So I think I better plug this in into the equation and plug in what delta p is into the equation. And I think that will give me something where I can solve it for h. So let me do that plugging in things. All right, let's uh, make sure I didn't make any mistake in writing this down, copying most of things over, and just plugging in what pb is in terms of h. And now I'm going to solve for h. Um, it's a fairly standard algebraic manipulation. I need to move tb over to the other side, vb over to the other side, subtract pt, and then um, divide up by rho g. So I'll just do that in my head, write it down. You can pause the video and make sure you, you're following. So let's go. All right, I think that's it. Give you a little chance to look at it, pause the video if you need to, and verify that this is also what you get when you solve the previous equation for h. All right, once you've verified it, then all the numbers are there to plug in. So you are given the temperatures, just to make sure you convert it to Kelvin. So you will see that this ratio is very close to one, but um, different enough that you can just let that be equal to one. Um, the volumes, you can get the ratio of the volumes from this expression here. Um, hopefully you have these two constants in your background knowledge that the density of water is 1000 kilogram per cubic meter. Remember cubic meter is rather large volume, it's a thousand liters. And G, I don't think anyone ever forgets that, 9.8 meters per second squared. I think you should get the correct answer even if you use 10, but it's up to you. One last thing you need to be very careful about is you cannot plug in PT equals one atmosphere. I know I said it's one atmosphere, but you need to plug this in SI units. That's because when you look at this uh, combination of quantities here, you're kind of hoping that automatically this will all work out to be unit of meters. When you are relying on something like that happening, simply automatically, then um, you need to use basic SI units because one atmosphere won't cancel out with anything, but when it's in Pascals, the basic units in Pascals, kilograms, meters, seconds, they will all work out in a way that the final answer has the unit you are expecting. So all this comes down to, for pressure at the top, you need to plug in 101.3 times 10 to the 3 pascals. So that's it. Um, when you plug in numbers, based on what I see here, you should get a number that's uh, between 5 and 10 meters. If you get a number bigger than 10 meters, then something's definitely wrong. Um, because based on this number, I can quickly calculate in my head that the pressure at the bottom of the lake is close to 2 atmosphere, but not quite there. And about 10 meters of depth of water gives you about an atmosphere of pressure. So these are the two examples of applying ideal gas law. You will see more examples of using ideal gas law in the next chapter as we are working through heat engine processes. Um, but it, now is the time for you to kind of thinking in terms of ideal gas law so that if you are given, let's say, two quantities, pressure and volume, then it should be automatically for you that you figure out, oh, I am given enough information to calculate temperature, or I can express temperature in terms of those pressure and volume, and maybe an unknown number of gas particles that you will hope that will cancel out on its own later. So that's all. Um, I will see you later. Bye.